dates, but it's still my job to take care of the people that I've been working with. Yeah, decisions are made, but the uncertainty remains because these people don't know whether they got feelings. So? See the torch? Yeah, he looks good for it. Found enough gas cans in the trunk of his car. He could start his own filling station. Want to get charged for assaulting an officer? So did he have a motive, or does he just like to watch the fire engines go by? No, he had a bit of a motive, a bit of a grudge. Boss of the factory fired him a couple weeks ago. Kind of overreacting, isn't he? Well, half a million dollars in damages? Yeah, I'd say that was overreacting. Shut Four up, years of my life, he come down that to me, man! Yeah, I told him that. I'm not sure. What's happening? The bigwigs from Division have been in with the lieutenant for two hours. And the shouting stopped a couple of minutes ago. Well, whatever it is, Lieutenant Hogan is not a happy no, camper. I understand, OK? Yeah, I it's very clear. The handwriting is there. We'll be in touch with him. I'm sure you'll be in touch. All right, everybody, we're going to have to have a talk. Sounds like you're coming out with a storm warning. You know, I wish it was that easy. Maybe we could just take cover and uh, and ride this whole thing out. What's happening, Lieutenant? Is there something personal? Personal? Yeah, it's personal. To all of us. It uh, it looks like they uh, could close the station. Mid South could be history. Oh no. A police station shutting down is an event that always inspires a reaction. For the public, the reaction is fear. They realize that the familiar beat cop is no longer just around the corner. For the police, it's another stumbling block in their attempt to stem the wave of crime that's washing over our cities. For the faceless bureaucrat who makes the decision, his budget may look that much closer to balancing, but when the real cost is added up, it's society, all of us, who pay. I'm only telling you what they told me. What, cops officer leading this thing? Some hotshot planet down at City Hall all of a sudden figures they can get out the building and run away. All right, what's going to happen to us? Yeah, are they splitting us up or what? You know the answer I get? In due course. In due course, they're going to tell us one or two things. Either we get a new building or they're going to split up the squad, disperse it throughout the city. Due course. Oh, yeah, sounds to me like we're in limbo. Hey, Hi, Tom. I don't know. Well, you're just in time to write our obituary. Yeah, I heard the rumor. Yeah, well, it's very nice of you to wait for us to hear the rumor. Listen, listen, I pitched a story to my editor about you guys. I think that if we can get public support, we can save the station. You think a pen is mightier than a wrecking ball? Hey. Hold on, Frankie. Tommy's got a good idea. City Hall needs votes, and Tommy's paper represents a lot of voters. This is Terry Hammer. She's one of our best feature writers, and I think if you guys tell her a real good story, she'd get it on the front page. This is Lieutenant Hogan. Hi, Jam Bone. This is Detective O'Brien. Pleased to meet you. Tom has told me a lot about all of you. I'm really looking forward to this. You know something? Our guys have jumped through a hoop for the men saving this station. Why don't you start here with Frank and Kevin? Kevin's been here the longest. Old age has its privileges, huh? Why don't you come this way? Uh, no, listen, uh, I'm going over to Nikki's. I told her what was happening. She's trying to get together a little party. I'll see you later, OK? Yeah. <sighs> OK, where do you want to start? Well, maybe the uh, partner's angle. How did you two guys meet? Oh, I remember that. It was love at first sight. Wasn't it, Frank? Gentlemen, one police officer has requested. Hi. Lieutenant, uh, this is the man you wanted to see, Jim Bone. Oh, good work, Freddy. Looks like a real mean one to me. Officer Jim Bone was the first man on the scene at the jewelry store. You got a pretty good look at a couple of the robbers. Take them with you. Might be able to give you a hand. Jambone, we've squared it with your sergeant. You're going to be on special assignment with us for a couple of days. That's great. Thank you, sir. Well, where are we going? We can start by checking this out. Make it fast. William Edwards. <laughs> Willie the Weasel. Watch me unload this garbage. 
Hey, uh, Jam, uh, Jam Bone, is that your name? Yes, sir. We got a good break here. Now, look, uh, this is a real good lead. It's William Edwards. William Edwards. Yeah, you see, but the problem is that uh, everybody in his building knows us. Huh. What do you think, Kevin? Oh, I don't want to give it up. Yeah. Do no. you think you can handle this information, kid? What do you want me to do? Tony, he is a kid, like you said. Well, like we'll send Carson with him. Yeah, well, look, if he plays his cards right, I mean, he can get a gold shield out of this. You're going to take the heat if it goes sour. Uh, you know? well, right. well, listen, uh, uh, whatever it is, I can handle it. I can handle it. Well, all right, here's what I want you to do. I want you to tell Carson that I want you to check this out, okay? All right, thank you, right. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, hey, take this. Yeah. And good luck, kid. Hey, kid. Yes, sir? I think you better get out of that outfit. I'm gonna make you for a cop. Right. <laughs> so it took you a while to adjust to this new partner. Yeah. He grew on me pretty fast. Yeah, like a rash. <laughs> what are you looking at? We've been riding together a week now. I was wondering, um, what? why we get to drive? Got anything they want to say? That started my life as a detective. Not pretty, but a start. Come on, man. This is garbage. You're going to keep me in here all night. Cole, Come put on. the mouse in interrogation. A lot of good stories get told in there. Yeah, and a lot of bad ones. Must be kind of tough trying to tell the difference sometimes, huh? Yeah, especially when the guy you're playing 20 questions with is not guilty. You're talking about Frankie D. Yeah, Frankie D. Shut up. Right. Shut up and leave her alone. Why should I? You didn't. She is in this here, too, isn't she? She is in this with you. Shut up. Shut up. She's very happy with what you've become. What is she gonna tell the kids? Daddy is a sellout artist. Is that what you want your kids to be when they grow up, huh? Be just like Daddy, a sellout artist? Ha! You're just my pollution! You're just my pollution! Hey, hey, hey! You're the same! You're the same! You're the same! You leave my alone! Leave my wife! Leave my alone! You've got your wife. They got her. Daddy! Are they threatening your wife? Guy wanted to talk to us all along, but they had his family. It was tearing him apart. Did you say that you cracked most of your cases in that interrogation room? Hey, Psst. We cracked most of our cases the old-fashioned way. A lot of legwork, talking to a lot of people. Some want to help us. Hey, what's up, man? I want to have you look at somebody. Well, I got a girlfriend in a wrestling match tonight, mud wrestling, OK? You know what I'm saying? Tell me something. Are informers really all that reliable? All depends on the relationship you have with your street friends. There you got, Barney. Herbert. Says you know him, though. Look, I told you, it wasn't even my hand. What hand? Oh, this flat Over there. Oh, my God. God. That's disgusting. Hey, come on, guys. Look, I know what you're thinking, but they, they have a will of their own. You know what I'm saying? I didn't do a thing. I thought you said last week about the fire extinguishers, Wayne. Right? Hey, come on, up, bro. Look, tell me something, Jim. But work your comedy routines out on something else, will you? I got a serious problem here. And what are we supposed to do about it? Well, tell him you know me, will you? Oh, well, we know him. Huh? 
That's it? Well, we know him? What about we love him? He's our main man. Let him He's go. He's a pervert. Yeah, fuck him. Hey, come on, guys. Hey, this is not, it's not a joke, huh? Is there no time to develop a sense of humor, huh? All right, Barney's done a couple favors for us. Why don't you let us have it? Leave the handcuffs on us so he can be cooperative. Hey, come on. Wait, second. what about these cuffs? Come on, Listen, I forgot I'm... my key, okay? I got in merchandise to take in care of. What? Not in the back seat? No, come on. In the I back seat. I got car stick in the back seat. In you guys are going to regret it. This car is going to take yeah, that's him. I saw him get completely wasted up and down the strip, bragging about it all night long. All right, thanks for coming down, Wendy. All right, but listen, O'Brien, next time you need me, leave a message on my service, will you? Mostly this work is a lot of sitting and waiting. You ever find yourself running out of that kind of patience? Yeah, that happens. Every once in a while, you run into somebody who makes you lose it. I don't know, O'Brien. Something must have gone wrong before you got the wrong guy here or something. They cut me loose. No way. Come on. Get your hands off me, sir. Ask your pretty prosecutor lady upstairs. I don't know how you beat this thing, Booker. And I don't care, because I'm going to be on your tail. Now, don't you show him anything that you wouldn't want me watching, honey. Your closet, in your bedroom, in the john. You don't make a move that I don't see, you sleep. Stay away from me, O'Brien, you hump! You stay away from me, man! You end up hurt! Don't push it! I swear to God, man! You come to me, you got a piece of paper, or you're dead me! Get him out of here! Now! Oh, babe, the guy wants to do some talking. And, uh, what happened to Booker? Did he walk? Not for long. What the hell are you doing here? Someday you're going to thank me for this, honey. Get the hell out of here! You really think I couldn't find out where you were shacked up? So you got a warrant, right? I want to see the warrant. Come on. I'm going to make your life hell for you, Booker. You think I need a warrant for that? I don't need a warrant. I told you it's not my place. Anything you find here is, like, useless. Calvin James, he told me where he got the gun. Yeah, sure he did. Well, he's in the hospital. You want to give him a call? I don't have to phone him, man. I know my rights. So listen to me, Booker. That gun that you sold Calvin James killed an innocent woman last night, and her little kid was standing right beside her. So don't you tell me about rights. We are not in court. We are here. And right here, your rights don't count for squat. You're not going to get away from this one, Booker. This time you're going up for a long, long time. You ever done any time, Booker? Anybody ever told you what it's like? They'd just love a pretty boy like you and make a man out of you. Your eyes will just light up. When they see your sweet little face, they'll tear the skin right off you. Well, maybe that's your thing. Stay away from there. Stay away from there! <laughs> I can't imagine what it must be like having to shoot someone. Well, it's not something you forget about in a hurry. Hold it! Oh, he's got a gun! This was the first time that you had shot someone. How do you ever get over something like that? You never get over it. Nobody involved does. If he pulls a gun, you hit the deck and I'll take him. Gotcha. Welcome to the end of the story. Detective, come closer. I want you closer. That's close enough. All right. It's very simple. A neat conclusion. Take out your gun. Take out your gun. 
it now. Shoot me. Shoot! Very well. We'll twist the story. This boy didn't kill a girl. This boy had nothing to do with the death of Albert Gibson. You're after the wrong boy. This is an innocent boy. I'm gonna kill him. Now shoot. The young officer has to dig deep into his morality. together in this place. Lady, set a mouthful. Hey, you miss out on all the fun. Hey, who gonna look out for me, huh? Huh? Oh, gee. Dude, what's up, man? Ah, it's never fine. It's been one of those days. I'm gonna go clean myself up. We'll be back in a minute. I thought I told you not to do that. Come on, baby. What's your problem tonight? must have made you think pretty seriously about whether or not you wanted to stay on the job. Had his resignation all typed up. But you're still here. Only because of this guy. You know, there ain't too many white boys I want to work with. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I never really felt qualified. I always wondered if it maybe it was my father who got me in. Man, you didn't use this connection. Yeah, but everybody knew his name. He carried a lot of weight. Hey. He didn't even want you in the job. If he was throwing in the weight around, it would have kept you out. Never really thought of that. Man, you got a college education, a father with a law firm. You could have been anything you wanted. You wanted to be a cop. Now, I got in because my buddies were going down to take the test. How do you figure that? Thanks, Cole. No problem. All right. You back on the job? Maybe you want to try a little work. We think this is the kid. Maddock is the only one who can make a definite ID. Want to try for it? Oh, yeah. Keep your hands off the nurses. It's a good thing he had someone like you who he trusted to talk it over with. Sounds like you guys are almost like family. Yeah, sometimes it's a lot easier to talk to your partner than your real family. Party line 82. It's important. Mean that uh, sometimes it's easier to talk to your partner than your real family. You want to hear it? It's off the record. I had a little trouble with my brother a while back. I started with Diamond Heist. for the money. What happened then? After I found out he was involved in it, I got involved. Sometimes you got to go beyond the call of duty. What do you look like? I don't know. It's hard to tell. Uh, dark complexion, uh, stocky. Uh, he was wearing a hat. 
But Debo, Debo, man, you put me between the rock and the hard place. No, I know, I know. But you're all I got. I just need some bread to get out of town. Colby, he is your brother. Look, five people were wasted last night. We're not playing games. Here. But I didn't kill anybody. You were by the whole damn thing. I'll help you. You catch the guy with the hat, and I will come back, and I will testify. I swear it. Okay, I screwed up. I screwed up. Look, I ain't no pillar of righteousness like you are, but I'm still my pa's son, and I'm still your brother. And that don't make me garbage. Yeah, my brother put me through a lot of changes. But he got himself straight now. He'll be OK. Excuse me, I got to get back to work. This is off the record, right? Right. I mean, I wish I could use it, but I gave you my word. Thank you. So are you getting any good stuff? Terrific stuff. Much more than I counted on. But I, I wanted to ask you something. Sure. What's it like being a woman working up here? Well, it has its rewards. Frustrations, too. I guess I'm supposed to have sort of a different perspective from the guys. Right over here. Well, well. This is a nice surprise. I haven't seen you around before. You a friend of Ellen? Is she in? You answer my question, please. Just tell her her mother wants to see her. You're showing the wrong line of work, lady. Her mother? You just tell her. Why would she leave home for this? So you're in charge of sensitivity at Mid-South. Oh, she works here for one reason and one reason alone because she gets her business done like everyone else. She's not seeing anybody. I think you misunderstood, Mrs. Kozak. Detective Meadows put self on the line, just like all the other dedicated cops around Mid-South since day one. You can quote me on that. Thanks, Lieutenant. I intend to. Every time you read about something insane happening these days, it seems drugs are involved. It must keep you pretty busy. Yeah, you got that right. Yeah, dope's put a whole new spin on life. You got a lot of crazy people out there. Crazy people that are getting more and more dangerous, too. Lady, a while ago, a guy got killed for sitting in the wrong damn chair. Yeah, it was a hitman for a narcotics cop named Dave Jefferson, old friend of ours. Things could get very hairy around Dave. That's your father. Set it up, or your butt is history. You're such a charming fellow, Dave. Yeah. I see what I can do. <laughs> He's a cute man. Hiya, Dave. How you doing? Buy a girl a drink? Uh, nah. Not tonight. Go work with love. Forget about him. What do you like? That's what I like to hear. People like that all the time must make you a little paranoid. A little paranoid doesn't hurt, but sometimes you can second guess the wrong people. So what happens when the pressure winds up and you stop trusting each other? I want to know what's going on. I wasn't gonna bust anybody. 
Just make contact, see what these guys were up to, and string them along a little. What about the two musketeers out there? Back up, in case anything went wrong. My regular partner is not usually around. All right, you made your point. Don't beat it to death, huh? You two settle this later. Let's hear the story. I don't know the story. Whitey's one of your stools. You must have known he was bringing me the... You were gonna bust me.